Resident Evil 7 Biohazard. Is it worth a buy? Is it? Let's read the words, the words of Capcom Limited. Resident Evil 7 Biohazard is the next major entry in the renowned Resident Evil series and sets a new course for the franchise as it leverages its roots and opens the door to a truly terrifying horror experience. A dramatic new shift for the series to first-person view in a photorealistic style powered by Capcom's new RE engine, Resident Evil 7 delivers an unprecedented level of immersion that brings the thrilling horror up close and personal. Especially if you've got a PlayStation 4 because they've signed a deal that's full of greed for one whole year of exclusivity for PS4 VR. I do apologise that my review is two days later than everybody else's, but I am not a yes man who gets my copies two weeks before release. You see, all these people, have you noticed, they release their reviews, they've been playing the game for maybe, I don't know, a week, five days or so, and they'll release a great, blistering, great review. It keeps the PR machine happy, and if the PR machine's happy, they will get more and more exclusive early games. And you know what that means? That means they get more and more hits. And you know what that means? They get more and more money. And you know what that means? It means the f***ing sellouts. Because I've been looking at some of the reviews for Resident Evil Biohazard. And they are full of shit. Absolute full of shit. They are glossing over the cracks. Well, it's time to get the health inspectors round and uncover the real Resident Evil Biohazard. Now, first of all, I have not finished the game. Uh, I'm almost there, but I haven't actually finished it. Um, I decided that I'd rather punch myself in the face than actually finish the game. That's how mind-numbingly boring I found it. I love horror games. I loved Outlast. I love um, Amnesia, The Dark Descent. I thought that was one of the, if not the best horror game ever made. Now, Resident Evil, you've got to go back to the 90s when that first came out. It sort of set the whole thing going really i mean i can't remember a proper good horror game before resident evil resident evil was pretty much the first it kind of made the genre of survival horror and then we had silent hill after that and after that we then had shit uh, until Amnesia came along and rewrote the book. It rewrote the rules, Amnesia. Amnesia was just groundbreaking when it came to horror. Uh, no one had done it quite like that before. And then we had more shit until Outlast came along and said, hey, look, we'll take the best bits of Amnesia, but we'll add a bit more action to it and probably a better story, in my opinion. And then yeah, that was just amazing, Outlast. It had a huge, big play area, and it was a fun game. And since then, we've had nothing. I mean, there was Machine for Pigs, which was just garbage. Uh, there was Summer, which I didn't like, or Summer, whatever you got. I didn't really get that either. And there's been a few kind of okay indies, but this is the first really big first-person horror to drop since Outlast, really. So sit back, get your popcorn, and uh, I'll tell you what it's all about. First of all, the graphics are shit. It says that it's photorealistic. Now, I'm running a top-end rig on maximum. Everything's on maximum, and the graphics are laughable. They, look, I, I keep thinking I'm playing it on a fucking Xbox. It's so bad. I mean, photorealistic. Have you seen this? This is supposed to be a wooden tree in mud. It looks like plastic. It's just awful. There's bad textures everywhere in this game. It's awful. So, there you go. There's the graphics out the way. It ran fine. It ran fine, but it just doesn't look great, to be honest with you. The sound's good. I've got nothing against the sound. The music's good. The sound is good. The sound effects is good. Uh, the voices of the rednecks is good. Am I allowed to say rednecks? Is that like a... Is that, I don't know, am I, yeah, I'm sure with people in the comments, I'm, I mean, I'm sure you can say rednecks, I hear it all the time on TV, so I'm assuming that's the political correct people haven't, I'll not say it anymore, just in case you're not supposed to say rednecks. So what's the game like then, is it fun to play, that's what it's all about, who cares about the graphics and sound, is the game actually fun? Well, yes, it can be fun, there are fun moments in there, uh, unfortunately, they are laughable fun moments, you'll, you'll laugh. You laugh out loud. You don't kind of go, oh my goodness, this is so scary. Oh my goodness, this is just... You, you go, ruffle, lol. You know, it's 
it's not that scary that's the problem with this game whereas in amnesia and, and outlast you were absolutely terrified to go another step further forward in this it's just so badly done unfortunately now i'll tell you why it's so badly done it is completely scripted this game nearly every fight is scripted nearly every scare is scripted and they've done it in such a haphazard way it's it's kind of like imagine if i said hey i've got a horror game it's a cross between outlast and amnesia but it's a consoleized version produced by disney and directed by jj abrams that's pretty much what this game is for example the first guy you ever see in the woods at the beginning isn't actually really there even though he is really there because if you run after him he's not there he is he's there for artistic license he's there to make you go oh, there's a guy there i better get down in the bushes it even slows your walking pace so you don't get there too quick but i actually sprinted after him looked at him and he had gone and that sets the tone for the whole game you'll constantly find that the adversaries in this game are popping up where the literally could not be literally could not be it is physically impossible and i'm not blowing my own trumpet here but i pretty much called all of them all of them there's a part where the guy comes at you through a wall he jumps at you through a wall and the, i knew that was going to happen because he was trying to lure me to war he wouldn't i was trying to pull him in a, in a certain place to trap him and he wouldn't let me he wouldn't come through the doorway and he kept going back to this corridor and i thought why do you want me down that corridor and anyway i watched him he went all the way down the corridor and then turned right at the bottom of it and i went and followed him now as i got halfway down the corridor he burst out of the wall to the right now where he went down and round the corner it is impossible for him to have been in the room that he jumped through the wall of he literally could not get there now these aren't ghosts these are flesh and blood people so that was physically impossible there was another time when the mother jumped out on me from a place which was actually physically impossible for her to have been because i'd just seen her walk around a corner in the opposite direction with a lamp and there was no way from there to where she jumped out on me there was another place where he again the same guy jumps out on me you get the idea there was about another three uh one in the sewage place uh one in the bedroom and one in the bathroom he literally couldn't have been there but he was there and this is happening all through the game and for me that ruins the game because i'm like right i'm safe here there's nobody behind me nobody could be behind me so i can do this and then bleh, you know and it's like bullshit and every time every time you do something and get a piece of significant part of the puzzle you know you're going to get punished so you find something and you go oh there it is i've been looking for that okay 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 bleh. you're getting the scare you get the punishment it's so predictable it is the most predictable game i've ever played i was just sitting calling them all out in fact just in the last two hours i was playing it i was talking to my friends and as i was playing it i was describing what was going on and i don't want to spoil it but i'd done a significant part and i said and i bet this happens now and it just happened about two seconds after i said it it's it's that predictable the combat itself because there's a lot of combat in it you get shotguns i've got flamethrowers i've got rocket launchers i've got all kinds of weaponry i've got magnums i've got goodness knows shit tons of bullets bombs flames so you have a lot of action in this game which i don't know if it works really in such a claustrophobic place as this but the even that is scripted half the time you're shooting bullets you're wasting your ammo because it does nothing to the end the enemy at all when you're shooting him in the head you've got to wait till he does the animation of ricocheting and his head comes back before you can actually hit him again so if you fire a couple of shots in succession it does nothing it's just so scripted and bullshit that i stopped being scared after about three or four hours and i just started going around the house saying and what the fucking load of shite this is oh guess what it's gonna happen he's gonna jump out here Ooh, the lights have gone out a better face comes up to the camera there's a face it's just it was so badly done it was it was jump scares for the sake of jump scares and i think that a lot of this 
is because they had signed an exclusive deal with PS4 VR. And I think all of these things are put in there for the VR experience. There were so many times when I was playing this that I, I saw a situation and I just thought, why didn't they exploit that to scare you? There was a shit ton of really good situations where they could have done something and they didn't. And if I'd wrote this, and I'm not, you know, massively into horror, I do like horror games, but... You know, I've seen enough horror films to know how they could have done this so much better. I think this was just lazy writing. I think it was just lazy writing. On the plus side, it does stick to a bit of the Resident Evil stuff. There's lots of backtracking. Uh, you get a, a very small inventory and you're constantly having to decide what stuff to take with you when you're going out. You're always running out of inventory space. There is a backpack that you can upgrade it and later on in the game, but you still run out of space a lot. You've got to constantly keep combining things to make new potions, new ammo and things. And the crafting is laughable in this. It's absolutely laughable. Um, you, I mean, the whole game is laughable, you know. You get your hand chopped off and it gets stapled back on and it's perfectly usable within, what, two minutes of, of going back on. You heal yourself from chainsaw wounds, stab wounds and bites and everything by pouring this water over your hands and that somehow magically heals you. You can craft bullets out of chem bag and uh, some gunpowder. You don't need casing or anything like that. It's... It's just so kind of, oh, that'll do, that'll do. Yeah, no, but that'll do. No, just leave it, that'll do. Yeah, no, we'll just do this, that'll do. Yeah, it's kind of, the whole thing just stinks of that'll do. Oh, yeah, we'll have this guy jump out here. Yeah, but we can't because he, the, he's, the guy's just over there. He can't be here. Oh, it doesn't matter. They don't care. It's not the worst horror game I've ever played, but it's, it's so predictably scripted and bad. Even the combat's just bad. If I'd paid fourteen ninety nine for it, I'd be kind of like, yeah, that's fine. I'd have thumbed it up. But I can't. This is forty pound, fifty if you're on a console. Now I was lucky. I got mine free off Green Man Gaming, and you know I thank them for that. But you know that doesn't mean I'm going to thumb it up. I mean, I'm really pleased to give us a copy, and they give us a copy simply because of all the affiliate work I do for them, you know? They never says, oh, you have to thumb this up, you know, you have to like it, you know, I, I didn't do In fact, I streamed this for six hours, I think, uh, yesterday, and Green Man Gaming actually came in the screen, the, the, the stream, while I was slagging it off. So, yeah, hey, that proves one thing, that I'm not a f***ing sellout. So there you go, guys, that's my review of Resident Evil 7. Just beware, beware. There's a lot of scripted... Uh, gameplay in it and uh, yeah you'll get a few scares out of it yeah you'll get a few atmospheric moments yeah you'll have some fun with the flamethrowers and things like that but if you're looking for a really good immersive horror game from the likes of Amnesia and Outlast you ain't gonna find it with Resident Evil and um, oh shit there's the developers so there you go guys, that's my review of Resident Evil 7 and I'm sure there's quite a lot of the Resident Evil fans will agree with me but then there'll be the minority of fanboys that'll come over from Reddit after hearing this review and they'll be telling us that I just don't understand Resident Evil or whatever and there's no place for them on this channel so as old Meg would say yeah.